Hi everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Justin Lang with Sinclair Dental. I want to welcome my customers in EIN Nova Scotia. So today's video will actually do uh, a quick PowerPoint presentation on a, sub a subject that I find is incredibly important more and more um, in the dental uh, clinic is patient communication, but not just patient communication, communication in general, and how do you properly use great tools to achieve the goals that you want um throughout the clinic so we'll just run through a few different things a few different tips and tricks and i'm sure most of you do know uh you know how to properly communicate with your patients but sometimes uh we need a little reminder or a little touch up on on different things so uh so i'll start off by just going through a bit about who we are in terms of Sinclair dental um a lot of the customers uh, have been dealing with us for a while but i want to make sure that they know what our culture is and uh, what we represent, and then we'll jump right into uh, patient communication. So um, starting off, a uh, little quick background, Sinclair Dental, it's a Canadian owned and operated company. We've been around, uh, I know for, uh, for quite a while, starting in the 70s, and uh, it was actually purchased by our, uh, our late um, owner, Arjang, in uh, 1988. So uh, he grew from you know, $1.5 million in sales to uh, no, right now in 2021, it's way over 250 million. So quite, um, you know, quite the story, um, quite the adventure. Uh, started off, like I said, in Vancouver, and then we we you know started branches throughout, um, you know, Canada, and then you know finally the last branch that was built was around six years ago in Halifax. So really a coast to coast, um, a full service, uh, uh, you know, dental vendor. Uh, that we have uh, also, you know, full range of technicians. I think it's around between 150 and 200 right now in Canada, and the same with uh, sales representatives. So, um, like I said, just a few pictures here of, of when it started. Uh, you know, quite uh, quite the small company at the time, but grew and grew and grew throughout the years. Um, this is our head office in uh, in North Vancouver. And then this is our brand new office in Toronto uh, with warehouse. So we keep investing more and more in our facilities to accommodate, you know, a quicker turnaround time for uh, products and supplies and equipment and in service. And, uh, you know, uh, we get more and more people involved in our Toronto branch so we can, uh, you know, best serve our eastern side as well of the country. So what we do, like I said, we are for a vendor of equipment and um, in supplies, we do have high tech uh, dentistry as well, a full range of products, uh, you know, full range of certi uh, certified technicians. Uh, we have a full design studio as well. We have uh, architects that work with us um, that are employed by Sinclair to help our customers build a new clinic or an add on or any type of changes they want to do in their clinic, um, you know, as well as, uh, you know, financial uh, you know, solutions. We, with great professionals uh, in, in the financing part as well. Um, you know, again, we've built, you know, so many clinics with customers, uh, you know, including many in the Maritimes in the last six years, but we usually do around between 75 to 100 per year in Canada. Um, you know, obviously it does fluctuate, but, you know, we try to really work at, with the doctor's vision of what they want in their um, in their practice so um, we you know we had a chance to work with so many great designers in the past and uh, you know it is a very very exciting thing to do uh, you know and putting something to paper and then actually build it so we do have a great team for that um, we do and like I said we have branches all over head office has a huge um, in a showroom but we do have a great one as well in Halifax so if anybody wants to I know really touch and feel our equipment, you know, our high tech stuff, our, our cabinets, the, the, the chairs, uh, and really see what we have before making a, a, an important decision. We do have um, around three ops in Halifax that um, our maritime customers can go see. And as well, our e-commerce system is, uh, it's been up and running now for a long time, but the new re-event one, it's been a few years. And then we will have our live in inventory markings, um, you know, very, very soon um, online. So that's going to be very exciting for us as well. So basically, when you're going to go look for a product, you will see if it's available or not in stock right away. All right. So let's talk about our presentation today. So today we'll 
discuss, you know, basically what should be implemented inside a clinic to have the proper communication and really achieving your communication goals. So there's so many things and so many um, uh, tools you can use to utilize and uh, to really get your goals. And that's what we'll talk about today. So, uh, so here, uh, a quick quote, you know, the goal of an effective communication is to empower your patients uh, with the knowledge required to make an informed decision about their oral health. Uh, which, means, like I said, we need to give them the power um, to be confident in making that right decision for their patient. And there's different ways to do this. So today's hot words um, are very unique with communication, but there's so many things that we need to consider when adopting these protocols. And these are very, very important words that we'll talk about today. So like it says right here, pictures tell story. Images are key. So when you're communicating with patients, the easiest way to do it is with imaging. Very, very, very easy to use. We can talk and talk and talk, but utilizing images like I'm doing right now for my presentation, it is the best way to communicate with your patient. And adopting very, very good photography practices are very important. Um, in the past, I have uh, did offer a lot of uh, courses um, for uh, clinicians to uh, you know properly utilize their cameras or you know just understanding photography in general um, so these are very very important aspects that you need to practice um, every day even if you have an iphone it's fine if you have a bigger camera that you're not comfortable of using not ideal if you are fantastic but there's different ways to do this one be photography program but you need to make sure that if you're not comfortable of taking proper pictures, it's something we can discuss. Um, so why is it so important? Again, there's so many things you can do with great images, right? So uh, treatment planning, diagnostic, patient communication, what we'll talk about today, uh, legal documents, insurance, um, when you're taking pictures to send it off to a specialist, your dental lab, which is um, you know, incredibly important to get that very, very perfect shade for your patient. Um, marketing, very important as well, inside and outside your practice. Uh, you know, I say selling your dentistry, you know, selling dirty word, offering your dentistry. When you're, you, you see that a patient can really utilize um, a certain treatment, you know, to achieve their, you know, personal goals, this is a great way to do it. Um, you know, personal education, you know, how to review your cases and their professional develop, development, sorry. So here are just a few quotes. 34% of treatments or recommendations are not accepted for you know, numerous reasons. There are over a million dollars worth of accepted treatments in the average practice in over five years. So every time I did this practice, most clinics did say that I'm sure they were probably over that. Uh, you know, this is uh, you know an average. Um, yeah. So again, you know, if if your 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 patient is is not accepting a treatment that you are um, you know really um, not pushing but recommending. And uh, you know, eventually they do it down the road, that's fine. But if they, they go somewhere else because you haven't mentioned it, uh, you know, that's a heartbreaker. So you really need to make sure that they understand everything that you're capable of inside a practice and not be afraid of proposing or asking those important questions. Uh, communicating, uh, communication and education skills allow us to provide the technical skills we learn. So, um, you know, you're all dental professionals, you've learned many, many things, and sometimes it could be complex. So the pictures are very, very easy to demonstrate what you want to tell the, the patient. So again, improving communication, be more convincing, increase case success. Okay, the best way is through images. Okay. You can use a point and shoot camera, you can use your cell phone, you can use a DSLR, you can use an intro camera. You can use a uh, intro old scanner. So there's so many different uh, technologies that are available to you right now to help you uh, with your um, with your pictures. Okay. So again, this is very important when you're doing your marketing inside the clinic. Show your great work. You know, every time I go see uh, one of my customers, you know, most of the time I do sit down in the lunchroom, in the lunchroom, the uh, waiting room. And uh, sometimes there's TVs and sometimes there isn't. And every time I see a TV, I always captivated by the information that's on it when they're utilizing um, a great software to show different procedures of what is offered inside your dental practice. You know, um, if you're offering ortho or implants or show the patient what is a crown, show the patient what is a, 
a, um, a bridge or a non-lay or uh, a sleep appliance or um, you know any type of service that you're offering maybe you don't have time to show them show every patient or maybe they might know somebody that might need a sleep appliance but you know you don't you don't have a chance to talk to them as well so I think this could be a very great investment on your part is to um, you know put up a TV in your um, in your waiting room put one of those great you know programs that that show you know live um, what all these procedures uh, entitle and uh, what you can do in your in your clinic because like I said you can really change lives because some people some patients do not know what what you have to offer and you know it's very important for them to know everything that is available to them. Um, so what's you uh, know uh, what's available? Dentistry is just you know it's just not cavities, right? Indentures and root canals and ortho, right? I mean it's not just that. You know you can do veneers, you can do a diastema closure, you can offer implants, you can do whitening, you know you can do gum treatment, you can offer so many things. And as a patient, let's say I, I have a, a big diastema, as you can see in the picture here, and, and I've always been self-conscious and everybody's been, you know, telling me that, you know, if you want to close this, you're going to need to spend, you know, $6,000 on, on, on ortho, or you're going to need some crowns, but they probably, maybe they don't know that you can do this with a, with a great composite work. Um, nobody's been, you know, nobody told that to them because maybe the people that have been talking to uh, don't know about the new treatments and maybe at the clinic nobody's gotten the courage to you know ask them about their smile if there's anything they wanted to change because they're afraid that the customer will will be upset so it's very very important for them to know what's available we know we're the industry and we know exactly what's available the patient might not know so here your muffler needs replacing right so um, everybody went to a garage for their car you know, it's very hard. It's very unsettling. You know, you need brakes, you need this, you need that. Do you really, do I really need all this? You know, and sometimes we say yes and sometimes we say no, but it's always unsettling knowing like, did I really need that product, right? That's why you need a, a technician, a, a car mechanic that you trust. Well, this is the same situation, right? Yeah, you, you need to replace this, uh, this um, uh, amalgam filling. You need to do this, you need to do that. You have a crack here, you have a crack there in your tooth. Really? Show me. Well, we do have the technology now to really show the patient of what is um, what is uh, available in the market to you know to fix this issue, right? Um, you know, you have a diastema. Okay, well, let, you know, use a, a program. There's tons of programs out there that can actually do simulation, with closing off a diastema, doing an ortho simulation, do a cleaning simulation. There's so many things, whitening simulation. There's incredible amount of stuff that you can offer your patient in terms of, of uh, imaging communication that will really help them make that right decision for their oral health and, or choose that right treatment. <clears throat> so your team, so work as a team. So it's very, very important to be very consistent, okay? And I'll give you an example, and I'm sure this happened to probably all of you. You're in the chair with the patient, and you know the best thing for them would be let's say a crown, right? And um, they never had a crown. You know it's it's going to be between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars, and oof, maybe they should just you know patch it up, you know, with a composite, and and they'll be good to go. And oof, okay, well you know I'll I'll ask somebody. And the person usually that they trust the most inside the clinic is the is the receptionist, is the and they're going to ask. And if that front desk person doesn't have the vision or the the education, the same people in the the clinic, um, she's not going to have the same message. Maybe that that you know the receptionist um, you know finds that no matter what, you know, fifteen hundred dollars is a lot of money, no matter what you're doing. So the communication won't be the same. The, the message won't be consistent. So it's very 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 important to make sure that everybody in the clinic, every single person is on board with every treatment plan that they understand what it is and how they can support the patient get to where they need to be. So control, again, like we talked about before, it's very important to give control to the patient and make them talk it over with you and really make them realize that, you know, they, they have control and they're the ones that decide 
It's not going to be an information dump on your part. It's really going to be a two-way conversation, right? Share the facts, really explain the treatment in very simple terms, right? Um, and ask what they think. And then you don't talk. If you don't ask them what they think, you're, you're, you've lost everything that you did. You need to ask them what they think so they can really get through their head of what you've, you've mentioned and really make sure they understand. So always ask them what, okay? So comfort and happiness. So the patient needs to feel comfort in every aspect of the treatment process, okay? Ask them how they are feeling during the procedure, you know? Ask them once in a while what they're feeling, if it's okay, right, in, in every aspect. A patient will be more likely to accept a needed or a want, you know, treatment if they enjoy the experience. If they hate going to the dentist, if they don't like it at all, they find it rough, they find it stressful, pretty big chance they're not going to accept, you know, the very, you know, minimum amount of work that they need in their mouth. They might not choose the right or the best treatment in there uh, that they would need just because they don't feel comfortable. So it's very important to make this patient very happy and, you know, and they're heard if there's anything going on and they're very comfortable, okay? Explain, um, implementing new technologies as well will very, very um, uh, excite the patient of what's going on in the dental practice. You know, oh, I'm using this new, uh, you know, electric um, uh, syringe that will really, you know, uh, you know, cut down on the pain when you're doing an injection, or I'm using this type of, of milling machine so you don't have to wait, let's say, a week for a crown. So there's so many things, so many new technologies that you can, um, you can talk about. And this way as well, it's gonna get you excited to talk about your field too. So you won't sound like a broken record of the same process. So your excitement when you're, you're proposing your treatments will be even more energetic than what it was before because you are going to use a new piece of technology to treat their, uh, their patient. Again, opinion, always ask your patient for their opinion. Okay? Always, it could be negative, positive. If it's negative and you know about it, you have a chance to get over it, okay? But if you don't know, there's no way they're gonna leave, they're not gonna come back, okay? Really give them the power, okay? If you don't ask their opinion after you explain the treatment, the only thing they're gonna remember is the pain, the cost, right? And is this really needed? So really, really asking what they feel because in their head, when you're talking, they think about all these things. Okay, is this going to hurt, right? How much is it going to cost me? There's so many things that's going to go on in their head. So really make sure you keep that two-way communication open, okay? And this is a really fun one. And this is very important to really, you know, separate yourself from, from others is take notes in the patient's file. Take notes about you know, their, their, their kids, grandkids vacation, what they like to do at home, what they like to do to have fun. Um, you know, if they like their job, is it exciting? Ask them again when they come back and they, it's just going to make them more comfortable and make them feel like they're at home. So always, always stay positive and focus on your work. But like I said, just to make sure that they're, they feel a little bit closer to you, uh, you know, re, re, you know, talk about again what you talked about in the, in the previous uh, appointment. Um, welcomes and goodbyes. So reception is crucial to set the tone of the appointment. So when the patient comes in, it's incredibly important to have somebody in the front desk that's so dynamic, that's so exciting for them to be there. And if there's anything that they can do to make the patient feel comfortable and ask them, you know, you're going to be waiting. Is there anything we can do? You know, is there, uh, you know, is there, obviously now it's difficult because you can't really offer my coffee or anything. Of course, it's not the spot, but um, if they need something to drink or if they need uh, you know, a toothbrush to brush your teeth before, maybe they, they forgot to do that. So if there's anything that the reception can, receptionist can do, the friend this person can do, it's very important to make them feel comfortable. Again, be, be overly nice, very, very enthusiastic. Um, make them feel comfortable before they leave as well. Okay, don't let them leave if they have any questions. If they look unsettled, if they look that they're concerned about something, it's very important to make sure that that is being cleared off right away before the patient leaves, okay? So the lingo, again, we talked about, there's so many things that we know that we are aware of all the different treatments that can be offered. But most of the time, the patient doesn't know our lingo. When I started in this industry, um, you know, a crown was not, mm, was not something I knew much. I, a crown was something you would put on your tooth that it cost a lot of money. I didn't know 
you know, I didn't know what an onlay was, what a bridge was. I didn't know much about, you know, about dentistry. It was mainly, you know, I have a denture and I have ortho and that's it. So whenever that you're explaining, you know, like I said, a, a composite restoration or, um, or an onlay or a crown or a bridge or an implant or, you know, specific ortho work, anything, trying to use uh, layman's terms to really explain your procedure to make sure and if they understand the lingo great use it right but make sure that they understand what you are uh, trying to explain so the compliment sandwich and this is something uh, that you know it could be used in every part of life when you're dis discussing something that they need to improve um and you could, like i said it could be anything in life use it in a way of a compliment sandwich so basically you start off with a compliment you discuss something they need to improve and you finish off with a compliment right um, you know, I can tell your brushing really, really improves, but you do need, you know, you do need a tooth that needs filling, uh, you know, but the rest of your teeth look amazing. They look really well. So uh, you can utilize this in different ways, but just to make sure that they're not bombarded with all negative stuff, put a lot of positive twist in there as well. Be professional, always smile, always, always, always smile. Um, you know, you might be the only one that that person has seen smile throughout the day, you know, it's getting more and more stressful, especially now with COVID people don't go out as much. And you might be the only person that they've seen that week, especially for elderly people that don't work, um, that they're retired. So make sure that you're overly excited. And trust me, this is gonna go such a long way. It doesn't cost anything to smile. Please just smile and be you know, excited to see your patient. It's gonna go such a long way. Um, no, don't talk too loud. You know, obviously it's something that I do a lot and I, I, I work on it consistently, but uh, don't talk too loud. Be trying to, you know, trying to be calm as much as possible with your patient. There's nothing wrong with laughing and look excited, but trying to keep calm, um, you know, not just for your patient, but everybody else in the clinic. Absolutely no gossip, right? Doesn't look professional. Um, you know, talk about them, but don't talk about, no, you know, maybe a few, few news, uh, here and there, but nothing negative, always positive news, right? People get negative news all the time. No foul language, of course, you know, and get no bad news. So this is very, very important. And a lot of clinics are kind of, um, this is the part that's being missed. So the visual message that when people walk into your clinic, how you're dressed, what's on the walls, what the, what's the aesthetic of the clinic, right? So um, one of my good dentist friends in Quebec, uh, worked with her, you know, around eight, 10 years ago. And she had a great example. Um, her, you know, her and her dad were the dentists in the clinic and they were offering really high-end dentistry. And basically when the patient came in, the, the visual was, you know, on the walls was just flowers and very, very light stuff that, you know, obviously it's very calming, but it didn't really look like, you know, what we see professional now, you know, very solid colors. You know, most of the time, you know, if you're wearing black, and you know, you're not going to be a, P, a, a pediatric clinic, right? You're you're going to be a, a high-end specialty clinic, or you're going to be a oral surgeon or an aesthetic clinic, right? You're trying to keep things professional. And at the same time, if you're an aesthetic clinic, uh, an aesthetic clinic, a pedo clinic, you do want to have all those bright, you know, colors, the pinks and, and the bright oranges or all multicolored uh, um, the way you're dressed and on the walls, you want stuff for kids, right? So just have to make sure that the, the visual inside your clinic reflects the type of dentistry that you are using, right? It's very, very important to um, take notice of this. It, it, could be, it could look really nice. It could be very, very nice on your, you know, your pictures could be very nice and the way your, your clinic is set up, is, it could be very nice, but it doesn't mean that it's the right message that you want to pass on to your to your claim to your patient, sorry. Uh, you know, never treat the wallet. So this is something that's very important. If you have a patient that you had for a very long time, and this patient always took the very basic of treatments, um, you know, never, you know, for that, you know, that crown never wanted to take the, um, you know, the, you know, for that, that broken teeth never wanted a crown, always uh, took the, the, you know, the simple patch of, of composite. Uh, but eventually, maybe that person is going to want to spend some money inside their, their mouth because they're tired of, of always patching. Maybe they uh, ran into some money. Maybe, um, you know, they just, you know, they just feel differently and they really want to take care of their, um, their, uh, their body. Maybe they're, they started dating again. They want to do something different. So make sure you always ask 
the, the proper questions to your patients. Always offer what, you know, what is the best treatment, not what you think they're going to be able to afford. You know what? I'm not going to talk about, you know, a crown because I know they're not going to take it. Always mention it because you never know what's going to happen. So good, good, uh, good, better, best, you know, give them the option. Like we said, when you're communicating, communicating with your patients, you have a, they have a carry, okay, a composite or ceramic restoration. You know, talk about dentures. If let's say this patient always knew removable dentures was only the, the, uh, the, um, the option I have, uh, I was just talking to uh, an aunt the other day and she's like, you know, I'm tired of, of wearing my dentures. And um, she said, you know, back in the day, I, I looked at a all on four and it was really expensive and I can't afford, you know, a full mouth of, you know, $35,000 worth of, of, of dentistry. And I said, well, have you ever thought of a, you know, of, of, of just like a locator type, uh, you know, snap on denture? Never heard of it. So obviously this person thought it was, you know, you, you have your denture and you have your high end $35,000 full fix solution. So there's so many options that you can offer your patient maybe they won't go with the most expensive one but they're going to go and step up just a bit to make sure that they you know uh, they're really happy with what they're getting they're really happy with the look they're really happy with the with the strength of what they're going to get in terms of restorations and uh it's going to last you know maybe a little longer than when they were using before right so there's so many options for so many treatments never assume that the patient will um you know, will say no. And if they do say no, they might say, you know what, I'm tired of this. I'm going to save up and I really want to have that implant instead of that butterfly bridge, right? So never assume, make sure that you communicate with all your patients, uh, the option that's available to them. So investments, and this is a big one that I find coming from a small town, be very proud of your investment that you've done inside the clinic, right? You're investing in CE and equipment and technology, renovations. You, you're investing in your patients. There's so many things that you've done to make sure that your patient has the, the best, uh, you know, the best experience as possible. You really made sure that your, um, your staff is so excited to come to work because they work in a beautiful practice. Um, you know, Again, you know, small towns, big cities, I, I think there's you know, the same everywhere, but you know, you, you go in somewhere into a clinic and it could be, you know, the old equipment, no new technology and, and you, know, uh, you know, not nice for me to say this, but you know, they're gonna come in and say, well, you know what, I'm probably gonna pay less because this is, you know, this is not fancy inside here. Instead, they're gonna go see a really nice clinic and they're gonna see beautiful equipment. It's, oh my God, this is gonna cost me a fortune because you know I, I'm probably going to have to pay for that doctor's new car and do this, do that, and what they don't understand is it's completely the opposite. You know, the the, the patient is going to pay the same price in general for the same treatment, but the the one that invested in the practice took that money and and really um, you know invested in the practice, but as well in the patient. So I think it's so important to really you know brag to your patients of what you're doing for for them, right? Everything that's beautiful in your cleaning, that's new, that everything that you've spent, it's for them. You know, it's it's really for them. It's really items that or training that you took that is for increasing their comfort, increasing the the longevity of, of their of their restoration. It's increasing their um, you know their their uh, the beauty of their teeth. It could be anything. So don't be afraid to you know really talk about. Uh, the exciting course that you took last weekend, uh, uh, the new type of, of treatment you're going to be, you know, you're going to be offering very soon. Um, you know, talking about, okay, now we won't send anything to the lab. We have a, a, a milling machine for our crowns here. Now we can, you know, do it. It's going to cost you, you know, a little less money, but it's going to be quicker and nicer. There's so many things that you can talk about to really make sure that, you know, every penny that the, the customer the patients spend will be utilized in its fullest to make sure that they're getting the best treatment uh, possible. Um, question list, this is very important as well. Uh, have a question list that presents, you know, you present it verbally to the patient to make sure that they really understand everything. Um, and these questions could be very simple. Of course, there's medical questions you can ask, but no, very simple. I know, how are you feeling, right? They might confess to you that they're, they're having a bad day and they do need to talk to somebody. Right? Are you sleeping well? If they say no, well, maybe they they do you know they they're having sleep apnea or 
they're snoring so much and they might be the perfect candidate to offer them a sleep appliance, right? Or be the hero and, and refer them to the, the, the specialist, right? Um, you know, is there anything you want to talk about? Is there anything in your older health that you want to talk about? And is there anything in your smile you'd like to change? Is there anything in your smile, right? You don't have to say, hey, like, you know, change something or are you happy with your smile or you like that big diastema? Are you happy that your teeth are yellow? You don't have to be that specific. Is there anything, anything? Because you can say you'd be amazed now all the little, you know, um, advancements in technology that we've been having in the last five years that could we do so much. So maybe, you know, that person that did have a diastema back in the day when they started to be, you know, uh, sad about it or very concerned about it, you know, maybe back then it wasn't an option to do something, but now it could be very, very easily uh, addressed. Um, be excited, right? In um, increase your patient IQ. You know, being excited as a clinician will get the patient excited as well, but be excited about, you know, dentistry and trying to get them excited about dentistry. It's like any passion, right? Um, you know, somebody that loves cars, right? They're going to be, they're going to look at cars all the time. You really think somebody that, you know, looks at cars all the time that has the funds to buy a hundred thousand dollar car that's going to buy a five thousand use five thousand dollar used car? No, they're not. They're going to buy something that excites them. You know, you take somebody that loves shoes, right? Are they going to buy, you know, the, the twenty dollar shoe all the time? No, if they have the money, they will spend. So get them excited about their dentistry. Get them excited about, you know, the benefit of, of, of having a great smile and how it can change their life and how it can change their, um, you know, how people are going to be, uh, you know, obviously looking at them. But you want them to, to really appreciate the uh, importance of, a, you know, a great, you know, high, you know, oral hygiene. But, you know, aesthetics are very important as well. So, uh, again, get them excited about dentistry. So for concerned patients, somebody that comes in that's very unhappy, okay, maybe you did a composite and the composite popped off. Maybe there's a good reason why it did. Maybe there isn't. Uh, it could be anything that the patient, you know, came in the clinic and they're, you can tell they're very upset. They're very unhappy. Don't be defensive. Really listen to them and be sympathetic, um, uh, you know, show some empathy, be sympath sympathetic with them. Um, you know, everybody has a bad day. Maybe that was just a bad day as well. So really, really be on their side. Uh, don't go on the defensive, right? And really ask them, okay, right now, what would you like us to do, right? What would you like us to do? And, you know, maybe you can't do anything, but at least they know that you're going to do the best that, they, that you can. And this is our last, last little thing. Be really confident, okay? Um, I remember my first job out of college, I was selling cars and I was very young and I wasn't confident of talking to my customers about, you know, okay, well, this is going to be the price or this is going to be this is going to be that. And I was basically, you know, regurgitating what my sales manager was telling me to say, which didn't sound professional at all. It sounded very nervous. Uh, and it was really, it was really stressful. So uh, make sure that you, you practice what you, you know, you practice what you, uh, you want to uh, discuss with your patient. Uh, patients, you practice with your team, make sure that your team is very much aware of everything that's going on. If somebody has, you know, a bad experience with a patient, talk to them in the next meeting with your, with your team. Maybe they will have some good feedback. Everybody has different experience in the dental practice. Some have been, you know, in the field for 40 years and some have been, you know, just the first year. So it's so important to make sure that you are very, very um, confident in you know, sharing the, the vision of and the message you want to communicate with your patients and, and the rest of your team as well. So, um, so again, thank you so much for uh, being with me today. This is it was a very long one, and but I find it so so important to you know really utilize communication. And like I said, now it's it's more important than ever. Our world is changing very rapidly, and we need to make sure that you know our you know the patients are are being you know uh, understood and they know about every option that's available inside your clinic, right? And to make sure that they have the best oral hygiene as possible. So again, thank you so much for being with me today. 
Uh, if there's any questions, you can always email, call, or, or write down in comments at the bottom. And uh, we'll see you in the, uh, the next video. Thank you so much.